we're going to look at decimal numbers. Now, decimal numbers arise out of our number system. Now, if we think about numbers that we're very familiar with, things like 532, we write it like that, 532. But we understand, because of our place value system, that that 5 is not just a 5. It's actually 5 lots of 100. In other words, it stands for 500. And this 3 isn't just a 3. It's 3 lots of 10. In other words, it's actually the 30. And this 2, well, it is just a 2. It's 2 lots of 1 whole, so it's just a plain old 2. So our number system allows us to write very quickly and easily. 532, like this, means 532. The place we put the digit in tells us what it's actually worth. Now, we then want to go and have a look at pieces of the whole. We've dealt with fractions. Can we write those in the decimal format too? Okay, so let's see what I mean. Say we have a look at this diagram here. If we take one of these green blocks to be one whole, then what we've got here is one, two, two holes, right? So that's two. And what we've got over here is we've taken that hole, we've chopped it up into 10 pieces, and we've colored in five of them. So we know from our fraction work that what we've got is 5 tenths. And then here, we've taken the hole, we've chopped it up into 100 pieces, and we've got, we've colored in three of them. So we've got 3 hundredths. Now, our place value system allows us to write something that can be quite complicated, a number that's quite complicated, like this one, which is made up of two, five tenths, and three hundredths, in a very simple way. Because our place value system is simply based on powers of 10. So, depending on where we put the digit, it'll have a different value. Now, we've already looked at that for when we're dealing with whole numbers. But we have got this idea that if we put in a comma, anything to the right of the comma will be a fraction. And our fractions also go in powers of 10. So immediately to the right, we've got one tenth, then we've got one hundredth, and then we've got one thousandth. So if we write something like two plus five tenths plus three hundredths in a simple form, in our decimal number form, it'll just be like that. And here is the important thing, right? It's just this place value idea. This 5 here is not really a 5. It's 5 lots of 1 tenth. This 3, because of where it's sitting, is not just a 3. It's 3 hundredths. In other words, it's a little, little fraction like this of the whole. So the picture you need to have in your head is that if you see something like 2, 5, 3, what you've got to think about is you've got two big pieces and then you've got five pieces that are of the size one tenth. So you've cut up the whole into ten pieces and then you've got three hundredths, which are these three tiny little pieces. Now you can imagine you could even go smaller and you could cut this whole up, the whole thing up, into a thousand little pieces. And then each of those little pieces would be one thousandths. So you can imagine that once you get down to one thousandths, you're talking about very tiny, tiny little pieces. And you can even go further, one ten thousandths, etc., etc. Our place value allows us to make up any number we want to. Okay, what if we had a picture like this, where we have the whole being the big square. Well, we can see, what is this red bit, right? We can see immediately we've cut up this whole big square into a hundred little pieces. And if we count, we've, cut, we've cut, colored in 10, 20, 10, 20, 30, 31 of those squares. So as a fraction, we've colored in 31 over 100. Now, if we wanted to put this into the place value table, it's a bit unclear what we should do because we only want to put one digit into each of these spaces here. So we don't want to go and put 31 hundredths, right, in like that. So what do we do? 
hopefully it's immediately obvious to you that if you've got this little picture over here where you've got these 31 hundredths that actually it's the same as having one two three lots of tenths right these long blocks each being one tenth of the whole and one little block one hundredth so for 31 over 100, we can just put into our place value, we've got 3 tenths and we've got 1 hundredth. How many units do we have? We have 0 units. How many thousandths do we have? We've got 0 thousandths. But we don't actually need to put that 0 in there, right? Um, because if we just write 0, 3, 1, we understand that everywhere after that there are zeros. We don't need to put the zero in to keep us correctly in our place value. Okay, quickly write this one for me into a place value table in your homework books. Pause the video and do it now. Hopefully you immediately saw that what you've got here is you have 84 over 100. And just as we saw previously, that's the same as 8 tenths, this blue bit, plus 4 little hundredths. And so 84 over 100 will just be 0, 0,84. Okay, so we can easily write anything now into the place value table to give us a clear indication of what it is. So if we have 503 and 4 hundredths, when we write it in, the 503 there's five hundredths, no tens, three units, and there are four hundredths. And we must put the zero in here in order to keep it in the proper place value. So we'll have that that is just the same as 503,04. Okay, what about something like um, 1,052 and 23 over 100. So we'll have here 1,000, they're no hundreds, they're five tens, two units, and 23 over 100 we've seen is made up of two tenths and three hundredths. Just be very careful and notice, because it's important in how you say things and understand things, there's a difference between hundreds and hundredths. That ths sound means it is one over a hundred, which of course is very different to a hundred, right? This is a teeny little fraction, whereas that's a big number. Similarly, tens, right? Here you've got five tens, right? Which is 50. That's very different to tenths, where you've got the th sound, which is just one tenth, which means a little piece of the whole.